and we we love the same Jesus, and we we love the same Jesus. I'll sink or swim on that statement. One of the things that made me immediately concerned about The Chosen Show was its ecumenical appeal. The fact that evangelicals, Mormons, Catholics, and even atheists love this show. This show has been uniquely, I've never seen anything like it really, how much it has unified in response multiple faith traditions. Anytime there is ecumenical appeal, there is compromise. And my particular concern is with the heavy influence of Mormons in the production and distribution of this series. And the fact that the creator of The Chosen, Dallas Jenkins, seems to identify Mormons as one of a number of different Christian denominations rather than a different religion with a different Jesus. One of the major red flags to me was the fact that the producer of the show, The Chosen, is a Mormon. My mate Caleb from I Think Biblically did a great video exposing this, and I'm gonna post that as a link in the description below. Also concerning is the fact that the distribution company is run by Mormons. Now, why would you partner with Mormons? The Bible says, for what partnership does light have with darkness? Now, I think Dallas Jenkins is probably a nice guy. I don't question his sincerity, his motives, but what he shows here is an extreme lack of discernment. And it goes far beyond poor discernment to actually not understanding a fundamental Christian doctrine, Christology, the doctrine of the person of Jesus Christ. Dallas Jenkins says that his life goal is to portray the authentic Jesus Yet he says that evangelicals and Mormons love the same Jesus. It is absolutely terrifying that a man like this has an enormous platform to reach so many people in supposedly portraying the authentic Jesus when he doesn't even recognize the inauthentic Jesus when he sees it having worked with many, many Mormons for a long time now. Let's call Mormonism what it is. It is a satanic cult I'm going to play some audio here from Pastor John MacArthur I have edited and condensed this audio I'm also going to place a link to the full audio clip in the description below so that you can listen to it here's the thing you need to understand to start with Mormons are on their way to hell it is a damning religious system it is so far from Christianity as to be more like paganism than Christianity. There are so many gods in Mormonism that they don't even know how many gods there are. In fact, there are more gods all the time. The Mormon couples that have been baptized in the temple in Salt Lake and have been faithful Mormons and done what you're supposed to do, they get their own planet and they just make gods with some kind of strange celestial sex forever and ever and ever. They believe that the God who created the universe is himself a created being. And they believe that Jesus, the eternal God, is a created being. They believe that God had sex with a mother and they had baby Jesus born to them as a God in heaven. This thing is so polluted and convoluted. It is... Um, it is idolatry of the rankest kind. It is polytheism of the worst kind. There's millions of gods all over everywhere. Mormonism believes the Bible is corrupt by their own statements. The Bible is corrupt. The Bible is filled with error. The Bible is not trustworthy. And the Bible has to be corrected. And the correct interpretation of the Bible comes through all the writings of Joseph Smith and the Pearl of Great Price, the Doctrines and Covenants, all of that kind of stuff is designed to correct the Bible and give added revelation. So what you have is a denial then of the Trinity. They don't believe in a Trinity. A denial of the nature of God as the Eternal One. A denial of the person of Jesus Christ as the eternal Son of God. There's even a denial of the Holy Spirit, the biblical teaching of the Holy Spirit, denial of the veracity and truthfulness of the Bible. 
So Mormons believe that Jesus is a created being. He is one of many gods, not the one true God. He is brothers with Satan. And there are quotes out there, statements from the leaders of the Mormon church that say that Jesus was married, he was in polygamous relationships, and he had children. That is not the Jesus of the Bible. That is not even close. Yet Dallas Jenkins is partnering with these people to try to portray the authentic Jesus. This is mind-boggling. This is staggering and, and completely shocking. Would the apostles, the disciples, would they partner with anyone who believed this about Jesus in their mission to try to preach the authentic Jesus? Of course not. It's unthinkable. In fact, Paul says that if anyone preaches another Jesus other than the Jesus that I preach, let him be accursed. So the Bible says, let them be accursed. Dallas Jenkins says, let them work with me to portray the authentic Jesus to the world. Dallas Jenkins has been working with these Mormons for a long time. He is not portraying an uncompromising truth to these people that is offensive to them. He is not sharing the true Jesus because these people aren't offended by the Jesus that is being portrayed in The Chosen. And in fact, what is even more scary is that Dallas Jenkins doesn't even seem to realise that the true Jesus is offensive to his Mormon friends. So I'm going to play some clips now of some of the staggering statements that Dallas has made about the Mormons and about the Jesus of Mormonism. You know full well in the evangelical community, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily proud to say uh, Latter-day Saints are, are, uh, n don't have the best reputation. It's been, I, I can honestly say it's been one of the top three most fascinating and beautiful things about this project has been my growing brother and sisterhood with people of the LDS community. And we we love the same Jesus, and we we love the same Jesus. I'll sink or swim on that statement. I'll never let go. I promise. <laughs> and I and it's controversial, and I um, I don't mind getting criticized at all for the show, and I don't mind being called a blasphemer. Um, I've prayed with them gosh, hundreds of times. What is their gospel? Um, well, the, the phrase, how much do I know? I think I would say, well, tell me two uh, things. If what is their well, gospel and what are they, who do they believe Jesus is? <laughs> well, I'm going to, I'm going, here, here's why I'm going to defer that question and maybe hope to maybe get a little bit more specific okay. because I'm not trying to shirk the question. It's I, I, I'm going to say I don't know. I don't know enough to, to intelligently say, to answer a question like what is their gospel. I'm going. Here, here's why I'm going to defer that question and maybe hope to maybe get a little bit more specific because okay. I'm not trying to shirk the question. So he calls them his brothers and sisters. He says that we love the same Jesus. He says that he's willing to sink or swim on that statement. And I'll tell you what, he's not swimming, he's sinking on that statement. And he said that he's prayed with them hundreds of times. Which God has he prayed with them to? Their God or his God? And when asked a question about what do the Mormons believe, what is the gospel of the Mormons, he can't even answer the question. One thing that I would touch on as well is there are other areas of concern too. The main actor that plays Jesus, uh, Jonathan Rumi, is a Catholic who on a YouTube channel is praying to Mary. To find these little bracelets. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Him and Dallas Jenkins also met with the Pope and got all chummy with the Pope. I actually did a video, which I'll link below also, on the Pope, showing that he says that an atheist can go to heaven by doing good works. And he tells a young boy to, to pray to his dead atheist father in heaven. This is necromancy and this is completely against what the Bible teaches. Yet Dallas Jenkins is perfectly fine um, endorsing a figure like the Pope. 
And this is one of the immediate red flags for me with The Chosen. Like I said, when it's universally loved by all of these groups, they're trying to create a unity among different cults and different religions, not just Christian denominations. And the problem is that you can only have unity when you have uniformity to God's word. Any other type of unity is called compromise. And that is what this show is clearly doing. The Jesus that is in the mind of the creator of the chosen, Dallas Jenkins, is not the Jesus of the Bible. You cannot share the Jesus of the Bible in a way that these other cults and religions are not offended by. You cannot partner with other cults and religions to bring the authentic Jesus because their Jesus is a different Jesus to the Jesus of the Bible. Now, this is one of the great dangers of making any production where you're trying to represent Jesus, the authentic Jesus, because the thing is that God has already revealed Jesus. He has already revealed the authentic Jesus in the word, the revelation of Jesus Christ in this book. You cannot make Jesus any more authentic than he is in the Bible. You cannot make him any more alive than he is in the Bible. All that you can make him is less authentic than he is in the Bible. Less like God has revealed him to the world. So is it a sin to watch The Chosen? No, it's not a sin. Would I recommend that you watch The Chosen? No, I wouldn't. I would recommend that you spend that time getting into the Bible, the authentic true living word and revelation of who the person of jesus christ is you don't need a tv show to make it any more exciting to try to get you more interested in reading the bible you need to get into his word get to know him and then he will create a passion inside of you and i'm going to be having another video coming up where 